Okay, so I had a couple of requests on how to use the gear relation option um, to do a couple of different things. The first one, I guess, is just how to make it so when you turn one crank, the other crank is going, or the other crankshaft is going to turn as well. So here you can see I've got mine where if recording this thing would let me, you can see one turn of the crank kind of moves the other one as well. Um, now, you first of all would have to, you know, I want you to put the models of the pulleys in there just like you would in real life. But what actually makes this work is this gear relation. So I'm going to go ahead and, and just delete that gear relation real quick. Now you can see turning this handle just turns the one crank and not the other one. So in order to get these two things to move together, I need to use a gear relation. Now, what you do here is you don't click on the actual pulleys or the crankshafts or any of the parts. The gear relation works on the actual constraints themselves. So what you have to do is find the two revolute constraints that are actually working on these two things. And so for me, those two are revolute one, that's that back crankshaft, and crank handle, that's that front crankshaft. All of these other ones, um, you know, aren't really, aren't really doing anything. So I'm gonna do it between those two revolute constraints. I'm gonna put in my gear ratio. I believe this is a three to one, and I, the way I did it, I have to do 0.33. Um, <clears throat> and then what you're gonna see now is that apparently broke some stuff, um, even though that's what I had before. And you see now, I did it the wrong direction, but turning one causes the others to turn as well. Um, and apparently that broke some of my tangent constraints, apparently. Don't know what's going on with that. So, who knows? But that's how you get those two to turn together. Now you can see like they're, they're working together at least, um, which is what it was supposed to be done. Now the other thing that you might wanna do is to actually have a motion that goes up and down and spins. And you saw these kind of things happening with that Trojan horse example. And the way you do that is you create this offset um, follower that's based on a circle. Now, one of the things you're going to have to do to make this look right in real life is use a round follower. I just happen to have a square one put in. The big thing though is that when you go and do these, instead of using a slider mate, you need to use a cylindrical mate. That's going to be this one. It allows it in and out and rotations. And so you can see if I, I can spin this now, hopefully you can see that. Um, maybe I can spin it. Um, which one's that? That's that slider. That should be the right one. It's the only, only other slider. So a cylindrical should be good. I should be able to, yeah, there you can see it's turning. Um, so once you've got that, then you're going to have to use two different, um, two different constraints here. Um, you're going to need to use your tangent constraint to make sure that the bottom face of this, this follower follows the, the edge of that. And then in order to actually make it spin, you're going to need to use a gear relation. And so the gear relation you're going to pick is between the revolute mate that runs the handle and the cylindrical mate that runs that part. That part. And you can set a gear relation, like a ratio between the two. I'm just going to do it one to one for now. And so hopefully what this does is as I do this, you can see that tangent is working so well. <laughs> um, but you can see that it is spinning as it goes up and down. I'm not sure why it breaks right there, um, but that's the two things you're gonna have to set up. Um, now, if you just wanted it to just spin and not go up and down, then instead of using a, um, what we call this, instead of using a, an eccentric cam, you could just use a regular round cam. Uh, and I know that one wouldn't have that issue with this, but I'm running into issues because when it gets down to here, it wants to be tangent, but it runs into itself, um, and it doesn't it doesn't want to be tangent anymore. So that's why that's running into problems. But that's the that's what you'd end up using is you'd use a gear relation between the revolute mate of the crankshaft and the cylindrical mate of this part up and down. 
Um, for this one, it's just a gear relation between those two Revolut mates. And those are probably the only gear relations you'd really, you'd really need for these. So that should be it.